Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. Today, we are venturing into Belgium. Now, Belgium is known for its chocolates, beer, and of course, frites or french fries. However, today it really is an adventure in the unknown because I am making tarte au maton or as it's called in Dutch, mutton tarte. Hope I said it okay. What is that you may ask? <laughs> well, in a nutshell, it's a cake made of milk curds wrapped in puff pastry. Hmm. To start, we need to make the milk curds. I'm mixing two milks, the whole milk and the buttermilk. Now, here's the tricky thing about boiling milk or cooking milk is one minute it looks fine, it's just heating up slowly, and the other minute it's boiling over. It's tricky that way. Now, if you decide to make this, you need to plan ahead because you need to make the curds the day before, at least 12 hours before you're going to make the tarte. So anyone who knows me knows I love comic books, or as they're called in French, des bandes dessinées. Growing up, I loved reading all the French comics. I loved Astérix, Lucky Luke, Jos Les Aventures de Josette et Jaco. These are all classics. But one that is very dear to me is The Adventures of Tintin or Les Aventures de Tintin. It's a series that was created by um, a gentleman named Hergé, or really his name was Georges Rémy. And Georges Rémy was born on May 22nd in 1907 in Belgium. Hence why we're in Belgium today. <laughs> the cool thing is that he created his, what's called his nom de plume or his pen name by inverting his initials R-G. So to make the curve, you basically have to get rid of the liquid. So I'm lining a fine mesh sieve with two layers of cheesecloth. I'm putting two layers because the instructions say that the curd needs to be fairly dry. So I'm thinking doing two layers of it, it'll help further wick the moisture away from the curds. So back to Tintin. Actually, at the beginning, when Hergé started like creating him, he was actually called Tatar. And these adventures, the adventures of Tatar, they were published in a Boy Scout in Belgium, like a Belgian Boy Scout magazine. Then about two or so years later, he introduced the world to the adventures of Tintin. There was a weekly insert or a weekly supplement for children in a Belgian newspaper. And that's where Tintin and Milou and all the other characters wound up being introduced was through this insert called Le Petit Vingtième. Okay, the curds have been drying for a little over 12 hours, so it's time to make the tarte au maton. When I first saw the word maton, it reminded me of mouton, and it's a word we use in Quebec, which means lump. When I think about it, the tarte is made with curds, which are basically lumps. So I'm thinking these two are related. Okay, so I'm going to start by beating the egg whites, and I'm going to do so until they form stiff peaks. So growing up in Quebec, I always look forward to watching the adventures of Tintin on Ciné Cadeau. It was a special holiday treat on Radio-Québec, which is a TV station in Quebec. And during the holidays, they it was a lineup of great movies, of fun kids' movies. And every kid I knew looked forward to it. They usually showed a whole bunch of Tintin adventures, such as Destination Lune, On a marché sur Lune, Le Trésor de Rakam le Rouge. These were awesome. And by the way, these all of the books are translated into several languages, obviously including English. So if you have not checked them out, it is so worth it. But I, I just loved hearing and seeing the characters come to life, especially Capitaine Duck. I loved watching him have a temper tantrum and listening to his expressions, which were like absolutely hilarious. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to mix the curd with the rest of the ingredients. I'm really hoping that my consistency is right, considering I've never seen a tarte au maton or a mutton tarte. Your guess is as good as mine. I do have a tendency that when I fold in like eggs or whatnot, I tend to be heavy-handed, so I really need to work on that. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more delicate, so hopefully I get that right. 
Okay, now I'm gonna roll out my puff pastry and get the pie shells ready. So obviously you can use ready-made puff pastry. It's available in the grocery stores and the frozen section, really easy. But I happen to have some homemade, so I'm just using mine. So the recipe I'm following is not specific as to the thickness I need for the pie shell. So I'm winging it. I figure though it's puff pastry, so how bad can it be, right? Oh boy. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking, but I split my dough into six instead of eight because I need four bases and four tops, right? Well, I can't put it back together and roll it again because then I'm going to lose the layers for the lamination for the dough. So I'm going to do a little bit of strategic rolling to compensate, hoping that works out. <laughs> So there's a bit of uh, you know, some stretching here and a bit of kind of pinching and patchwork. Yeah, this is not my finest puff pastry hour, but at the end of the day, I guess I hope as long as it tastes good, right? Okay, time for the oven and here's hoping. This week's vocab is le lait caillé, le bain-marie, incorporé. Une amande. Le babar. So the puff pastry is nice. It, it puffed up, so that's a good sign. Let's cut it open and see what it looks like. I'm thinking the curd cake might be a little bit flat. Okay, let's see what the taste is. So its texture's different, but it's nice. I mean, the flavor's good. It's a very light sweetness, so it's quite enjoyable. I'm not sure if the texture's right. It reminds me a little bit of scrambled eggs. It tastes good, but I'm unsure. All in all, I think this is a decent first try. There's definitely room for improvement, but the fact that everyone enjoyed it means I must have done something right somewhere. And also the fact that the month of May is the birth month of Hergé. I'm a big fan of his work, and so I kind of wanted to highlight that in the month of May. And it was a great way to introduce everybody to Belgium and and Hergé. If you try making the tarte au maton, please let me know how it turns out. I'd love to hear. As always, merci et à la prochaine!